this is another one of those videos where I'm blending two of my passions, videography and photography with bikes. So hopefully it will appeal to both audiences. So this is my new experimental e-bike that I've built. And I thought I'd make this video just for anyone else out there that's looking to do the same. You know, I'm no Projo e-bike builder. I've got a little bit of know-how about bikes, but in general, I'm pretty shit at DIY and that. So I kind of thought if I can do it, anybody can. Also, for anyone looking to do a build similar to this, I'll try and put as many links to resources, products, bits and pieces, articles down in the description below so that hopefully this video will be a useful resource for, for your own build. So this bike is actually an old Barracuda bike. It's about 22 years old. Um, but it's been fitted with the Bafang BBS HD mid-drive kit which will enable this bike to travel up to speeds of kind of like 36 miles an hour. On private roads, of course, because here in the UK, we're only allowed to use 250 watt motors on the road. So I'll let you guys interpret that information however you see fit. So anyway, I'll give you guys a little walk around the bike, kind of explain what I've done. I'll try and get a bit of footage of it in action. And then I'll also talk about how much it's all cost. So I'll give you just a real quick walk around the bike, you know, the kit, what I've added and stuff. Um, so obviously this is the main part of the kit, which is the motor itself. Um, you need to just make sure that you've got the right kind of bottom bracket for this to fit. Chances are you probably have, but it's you want the kind of bottom bracket where it's got the thread on the inside. There are certain conversion kits if you've got the wrong kind of bottom bracket, um, but I won't go into it too much now. I'll, I'll put a link to an article down in the description which will explain it far better than what I can. But essentially, you take off all of your crank and everything. You take off all, you know, if you've got a front derailleur, all that will go and you basically will fit this kit, will slide straight into your bottom bracket and it's fairly simple to, to bolt it on. There's obviously, there's videos out there that will show you how to do that. Yeah, you've obviously got your battery, which will fit on where your bottle cage usually goes. And then the other components really that come with it are obviously the cabling, you know, the wires and stuff, which is, which is the messiest part of these bikes. I've tried to sort of tie them up and neaten them up as much as I can and get them out of sight. I mean, I know some people do bundle them and put them underneath, you know, underneath the motor, which I was a little bit, I wasn't too sure on doing that, to be honest. Um, this bike, as you can, not all bikes have this, but it's got this little bar running along at the back here. So I managed to sort of feed a lot of the cables up through the gap there, just to sort of keep it out of the way of the crank and the wheel and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that really is where you need to get a bit creative. And, you know, I think at some point I might actually take all this off and try doing it again a bit neater, but it, it's okay for the minute. I'm happy with it for the time being. But just to explain the cabling briefly, you've got you've got the main cable that comes off of the unit, runs up, let me come out the other side, and hits this kind of section here where you've got four cables that come off this part, two of which are for the brake levers. I'm actually only using one of them. It comes with the brake levers in the kit. But the reason they come with their own brake levers is so that as you pull them, it, it shuts the motor off as you're braking. So you've got two for the brake levers, one cable for the display and one cable for the throttle. So that's all the cabling that comes up to the front of the bike, basically. And then the cabling that comes off around the bottom of the bike. Let me just come around here to show you this. You've obviously got this main cable here is, is for the battery. And then you've got two other cables, one of which you may need to kind of wrap around your chain stay a little bit, potentially, is for your speed sensor, which kind of, let me just show you here which is this little unit here, which just gets zip tied onto your chain stay. And then you just bolt this little magnet onto your spoke and you can program, you, you just tell this in the, in the display up on your handlebars, you, you input your wheel size. So for instance, this is 26 inch and then you know, you'll get an accurate speed reading. The other cable that comes off down here, which I've just bundled in with all of this stuff is the gear shift sensor, which I've not bothered with. But yeah, I think other than that, I think that's about it. Sorry about the garish green pedals. I actually bought these for a BMX of mine and they didn't fit. So I needed some for this, so they've gone on there. I know they look pretty awful, but there we go. 
But yeah, other than that, I've not really done anything. Oh, I'll tell you what I have done actually, sorry. I actually, I, I went out and I'm not running disc brakes on it either. You know, I've, I've just got standard V brakes on here. They seem to be doing the job pretty well. I did go out and buy new brake pads, you know, just so to give it a better chance of actually, you know, having a bit more stopping power. I think I'm probably gonna buy new V brakes, um, black ones. I don't really like the fact that these are chrome on here. Um, I think they're the only real chrome bits on the bike, so I might get a shot of those. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's the build. Hope that helps. So how much does it all cost? Well, like I mentioned, it's actually an old Barracuda bike that I bought about 22 years ago. It's super duper old. It started life as like a chrome, chrome and yellow bike. I had it powder coated years ago. It's kind of just stuck with me. I was nearly gonna get rid of it and I thought, you know, I'll give it a new lease of life and I'll use it to do the conversion on. So the bike, thankfully, didn't really cost me anything, if you know what I mean, it's just an old bike. The main crux of the build was obviously the kit itself, the motor, which cost 585 quid, and then the battery, which cost me 400 quid, roughly. I'll put all these, hopefully I'm putting these up on the screen now and you can sort of tally them up. I bought both the motor and the battery from Eclipse Bikes. There's a chap there called Rob who was super duper helpful. I really do recommend them. You know, I wanted to buy it from a UK dealer. I didn't really want to buy it from like Alibaba or Amazon. I'm sure I could probably maybe have got it for a few quid cheaper, but I wanted to buy it from a proper company so that I had a little bit of comeback. You know, if anything goes wrong, I've got someone I can send it back to. They can fix it, send it out again, etc., etc. The other bits that I bought are as you start researching this, you're going to probably start sort of hearing the name Lecky, Lecky Bling Rings and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is basically like a fake Lecky Bling Ring that I bought from Electron Cycles in the UK for 70 quid. And it gives you quite a decent offset so that you can get a better chain line. I'll explain more about that in a minute. But that was an additional purchase. I also spent about a tenner on zip ties, cable ties. I bought a bottom bracket removal kit from Amazon, which was about 12 quid. It was a bit naff, but it kind of done the job. And I also wasn't keen with the display that come with the kit, so I kind of upgraded it to the 500C, which is a lot more compact, which is kind of what I wanted. I wanted it a little bit more discreet. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely little monitor. It's really nice and bright. You can see it in daylight and everything. So yeah, there's a good, good, little, good little display. And I think that's about it, which I believe tallies up to about 1,100 quid, which I know isn't cheap, but then also when you compare it to how much some of these new e-bikes cost from the main manufacturers, it really is quite cheap. You're saving yourself quite a lot of money and you're gonna get a more powerful motor as well than what's gonna come with, with those bikes. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers.